Ooh. Right. So, um, all right, I'll go into host mode now. All right. <laughs> So, um, hi everyone, uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, just a couple of words before we start rolling with everything. So I'm Manuel, I'm gonna be the host of this webinar together with Katia and uh, I'm the president of ASNU, Association of Natural Sciences based in uh, Naples. And you're organizing this webinar together with uh, Animus Foundation in Poland, which is represented by Katia uh, together with Lukasz. And with us, there are also Fabio, which is working with us, and Mauro, which is also an educator from uh, uh, north, from the north of Italy. So um, this is part one of a, in a three webinar series about educational arts in general. And it's organized inside the bigger project of CARE, uh, Climate Action Role Playing Experience, which is an Erasmus Plus funded, uh, so a project funded by the European Union through the uh, Agenzia Italiana per la Gioventù, through our national agency. And with us today talking is Oscar. Hi, Oscar. So Oscar, uh, I did some research about you. It's very hard to define you in a few words. It's not like saying he's a researcher, he's an educator. He's a multifaceted person as far as I could see. You're a writer. You are a person behind uh, editorial pieces like Nessundove, Live.it, in general, a very active member of the Italian role play game uh, community and also as a library on, in Bergamo, right? It's not just a library, it's a laboratory, it's a creative space, it's many things as far as I understood. I hope to see it one day. And, and I will put all the references about him, about animals, about everything in the description of the video. So, I mean, Whatever you need to know about people will be there. Wonderful. All right, cool. So, Oscar, how are you? Okay. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, thank you very much, uh, Manuel and uh, everyone else. Yeah, uh, I um, think about myself uh, with a very simple uh, definition. I uh, I love uh, stories and uh, to share them. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm a, a game designer and uh, an RPG publisher. And I use uh, role-playing games, uh, both with uh, dedicated players and with people who do not usually play in uh, my work as uh, a museum educator here in Bergamo for the two art museum of the, of the city. Um, and I think uh, the interesting thing uh, about role-playing is that uh, it's um, it's like a meeting point between uh, different worlds, where you can meet uh, board game players, uh, improv actors, a lot of different uh, people. So I um, don't uh, like very much to use uh, a lot of uh, technical terms because uh, it seems to me like you know uh, to keep the gate uh, closed, and uh, I work to to open wide the door to role playing games. Because um, uh, initially, uh, a lot of people uh, don't uh, know anything about role-playing games, and uh, uh, we have to to change uh, this fact. Uh, speaking about uh, this word in a very simple uh, way, I yeah. think. Yeah, I understand. And, and today I we are going to talk about, uh, if you correct me if I'm wrong, like the first steps in the designing process of the role play games, especially uh, live action role play games, right? So the basics yeah. of designing and mechanics and so on. So that's yeah, yeah, that, that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, so um, because uh, the world of role playing games is uh, so so wide, we can have a very different kind of games. And uh, I personally work with uh, very uh, story driven games because I have a background in creative writing. Uh, but I, I think uh, in um, any kind of uh, game, in any kind of role-playing games, the most important thing uh, is uh, connecting the story you want uh, players to tell with the mechanics that we put the story in their hands. Uh, because uh, uh, a game, it's not like... Uh, I'm going to, to talk a lot about uh, novels or about movies uh, for uh, like, like example. But uh, a, a game is, is different because you uh, don't have the same amount of uh, control about the story. 
and uh, of course uh, you uh, don't have to uh, to justify a million dollars budget or or anything like that and uh, so you you can be free but uh, you have to to make uh, players free to use the game uh, with their own uh, sensibility and uh, i think it's uh, one of the most important uh, thing when you think about uh, a role playing game um uh, so um, I think, uh, uh, like with the movies and novels, uh, everyone can easily uh, tell games apart based on uh, on plot and settings. Everything, you know, you know, Dungeons and Dragon is a is a fantasy game. Everyone knows it. Um, they are uh, the setting is the the part that uh, they sell tickets. Uh, but uh, uh, technical choices maybe are less obvious but no less important. Mm -hmm. Choosing uh, whether to, to tell the story in the first or third person for a novel, for example, or what kind of shot to use in a movie change the, the, the works, uh, the work completely. And uh, it goes the same for, uh, for role playing games, of course. And uh, um, I uh, spend a lot of time working with, uh, within a team uh, and with the live dot uh, it, we like to organize, uh, you know, a grand tour of uh, of chamber of uh, chamber LARP, so for a uh, live action role playing for uh, a very little uh, audience, uh, very little amount of players, and but we like to to write them uh, as a, a community too. We like to uh, to speak about ourselves like uh, an orchestra. And uh, when we work uh, as a team, um, it's uh, everyone uh, have a different idea uh, ab about what uh, is uh, what is most important in a game. Uh, we are going to to focus uh, on team or on uh, on the mechanics. Uh, which one is most important? So I think uh, that the relation between the team of the game and the mechanics is the key to design a focused game. Uh, um, a chamber LARP, uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, any definition can be almost uh, anything, but I think uh, uh, we create a game for a one-shot experience and they are uh, really focused on one kind of, uh, of team, one kind of, uh, of uh, experience. And um, mm, so personally, having written many games, I uh, wanted to find uh, something different uh, every time. I tend to start with the, with the mechanics first and then come up with, uh, with the fitting team. But uh, you know, it's, an, it's not a, a rule, of course. And uh, uh, in project with uh, an educational goal, uh, uh, the team you want to explore is going to be your your starting point, of course. And um, the last time I worked with uh, a, a foundation uh, was uh, about uh, a game about uh, you know um, about uh, power, about uh, violence, about the mechanism of uh, of hate for the for the high school. And this, of course, was the was the starting point. We know the game uh, had to to speak about this point, and uh, we have to to talk to uh, a very specific uh, public. And uh, this was the starting point. When I can uh, create just my own game, uh, and maybe I just uh, I just choose uh, a, a game mechanic I never explored before. And uh, and and this is the starting point for uh, for myself. Um, for example, if you if you think about uh, movies, you can have uh, I don't know movies like uh, Jurassic Park, for example. Uh, the point is uh, the team uh, the team park with uh, with dinosaur, mm -hmm. the the narrative idea. And if you think about uh, I don't know. Uh, Boardman, for example, uh, by Naruto, is filming everything in a single tracking shot. And maybe it was the starting point. I, I don't know, but uh, 
it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. the most relevant. Uh, Choose one focus and then move from there. That's yeah, 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 yeah. The the core idea, yeah. the the big idea, if you if you prefer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, uh, finding the uh, the big idea is the most important thing uh, to do. It's mm -hmm. the not only the starting point, but you have to be faithful to this uh, idea in every stage of the design uh, process. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you choose uh, play as your medium of communication, uh, you already have made a, a choice. You have uh, boundaries. It's uh, a specific media. And uh, it goes the same when you choose uh, a big idea. Uh, uh, the, big, the core idea is your, your compass. And uh, it helps you choose uh, what mechanics and settings are uh, compatible with it. Uh, in my example, you can't film uh, uh, Jurassic Park without special effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you can make a uh, Boltzmann plot uh, uh, span multiple continents. You have to follow the, uh, the main char uh, characters all, all the way. Sure. And... Um, so uh, aside from the core idea, there are always uh, other kind of limitation and you can uh, turn them uh, into strengths. We, we spoke about uh, the public, mm -hmm. for example. So uh, you, you have to know to which kind of person uh, are you speaking to. You can ask uh, something uh, to uh, role players, for example. Or uh, or something else to uh, to I to high schooler or uh, to uh, to children or uh, other kind of uh, of different uh, uh, public. Um, I, I personally know that a game will work only when I can picture what things players are able or unable to do at any time while they play. So I start with the big idea and then talk to with the rest of the team mm -hmm. until I can uh, uh, figure out uh, uh, what uh, what the players are going to do and give uh, a significance, so give meaning to all those things. Uh, why uh, people are going to be sit down at this moment of the game, why they'll be on, on foot, for example, what's the difference and... Uh, and uh, I I think the the check of gun is uh, is the point. Uh, you know, it's important to be economical and give uh, significance to everything you put in the game. Yeah. While keeping uh, redundant parts uh, to to a minimum, mm -hmm. because uh, it's very easy to lose track of uh, of something when you write a story. Yeah. Whether you are a director or a novelist. And uh, uh, you know the, the the beauty of a story is uh, in that gap between uh, the creativity of the the storyteller and the imagination of uh, of the audience. Yeah. And uh, in role play, that gap is uh, as wide as it can be. I think uh, because you you put the the story in the player sense. And you know you you won't be able to predict every possible outcome. So it's uh, it's very important that uh, that you focus on um, a limited number of uh, of points and uh, to communicate them uh, as clearly as possible. I'm curious about one part. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Of course, of course. Just to make it a bit more also interesting for you, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Your first thing you said, so first thing you get the general idea, the concept. It can yep. be a mechanical thing, it can be a setting, it, something, the sparkle yep. type of the thing. Then you identify all the limitations you have. So yep. you have the targets, the location, the duration. Maybe it has only to be two hours, or it only yeah. has to be or only has to be outside or inside, or all the limitations that you have. One point that you mentioned after this, so once you identified these core pieces, you said you discuss it with others. How does this discussion work? Like, how do you 
frame the discussion with the group to make something come out of this? Because that's not, just talking may not be now. How you uh, frame it? Uh, in uh, at the first time, uh, uh, I try to, to say everyone uh, to never say a no to uh, another person idea in order to have a, a very free uh, brainstorm. And it's the, the first phase uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we usually have a team with a uh, with person with a very different background uh, because in our events, we just like to have uh, uh, people uh, with different background and not only, you know, a veteran role players or people who uh, we meet uh, every year and at, uh, at our events. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting to, to have people to bring something different to, to the table. And uh, in, uh, in our event, we like to ask people to, to bring uh, uh, something uh, they, uh, they like about the theme of the game because we established the theme of the game before. So it's going to be a game about, uh, for example, silence, a game wh where uh, uh, players are no, um, will not be able to, to speak in a, in a phase or, of the game or uh, in the entire game. And then uh, we, we ask to the, the member of the, of the team to bring something they can share in, in five minutes or so about this theme. It can be you know, uh, uh, a piece of a movie, it can be a, a quote from, uh, from a novel, it can be a game mechanic uh, they experienced in, uh, in another time. And so we have something we like, something we, we want to put in the game or something we want to avoid because uh, you know, a, a bad experience can be a, a great uh, source of inspiration. Uh, I like this idea, but I uh, didn't like uh, the way uh, another uh, author uh, put uh, it in place. And, and so I, I try something different, uh, trying to learn something about uh, what uh, I think it was a mistake, for example. And um, so I like to have a, a very free first phase. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to, to choose something, but um, sometimes when you are uh, just speaking, sometimes uh, an idea just made a, a click, it, you know, it can be the right idea to, to follow together. So you, did they prepare this, this five minute stuff before going to the, before meeting? So they all know the theme, they all imagine something, have a quick draft on their mind of something, something that is suggesting ideas, not something that is imaginatively sparkling. And then you work from there, like you start just as a starting point, of course. Yeah, of right? course, some, some of these uh, idea just uh, uh, doesn't fit together. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, other time you can just uh, find two very distant idea from two very different person. Uh, to go along uh, very well and so you almost have the the solution from uh, from the starting point it's like a puzzle yeah do, do you have one do you think it's useful to have one person that facilitates the whole process or you'd rather have it more equal and horizontal in the way of uh... in our experience we have uh, facilitators because you know we we are a community with uh, some uh, um, with some uh, directors, uh, you know, I, I'm going to organize the event, so I'm, I'm sure to be there, uh, for example. And uh, you know, I um, since uh, uh, we uh, organize this uh, kind of event to write game to put uh, in an anthology like uh, like this one in in our series, Crescendo uh, Giocoso. I already know which kind of game we already wrote down. And so if I want something different uh, for a different number of players, for example, or something on a, a different team uh, or uh, with a different uh, mechanic idea, I just have to be, uh, to say, okay, this one uh, fits well in the, in the anthology and this one not. But uh, if, uh, if uh, a group uh, don't have this kind of, uh, of need, I think you can uh, speak about, you know, at the same level without without a director, just because uh, the, the first idea is to never say no. So you don't need uh, someone to uh, to say no or to say yes to, to anything else. Um, 
of course, uh, uh, if you have someone with uh, with experience with the uh, with the media, you choose. It's uh, I think uh, it's a safe way to not try to do something uh, too difficult, for example, and uh, you can just uh, try to 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 stay on your foot uh, very well. May may I ask you something? Um, actually, when you do the brainstorm part, you are already talking about the how the game will be. So, in the mechanical way, or you tend to separate in two phases: the mechanical and maybe the setting, or you work it together. Uh, every time it's uh, it's different uh, because you know setting is uh, is more easy for everyone. So. Uh, a lot of people love to talk about uh, the setting. I will like to to set the game in space or to have uh, a fantasy setting because I love this kind of uh, of stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, to me, since it's more difficult, when uh, I can focus on a, a mechanic, it's uh, more helpful to me be because uh, I I feel the need to to start to to figure out the game. But uh, sometimes as a director, I try not uh, uh, to speak from the first time about the, the game mechanics because I just want everyone uh, feel free to, to speak about what they would like to, to see in the game. You may you. also ask something. Uh, when you speak about brainstorming team in the team, <clears throat> how many people uh, do you think uh, need to involve to this uh, brainstorm team brainstorming? What do you think? We we worked with a little uh, group, perhaps with you know three to to six uh, seven person, but it's just like it's um, it's our experience. I think mm -hmm. uh, if uh, people are um, are going to. Uh, to meet each other with the same with the uh, right uh, mind setting, you can also have uh, more people. Of course, it's just uh, a matter of time because everyone wants to see to say something. And if I ask uh, everyone to to bring uh, a five minutes about uh, something they love, uh, you have to uh, to think about time. If mm -hmm. I have uh, ten person, I need uh, an hour uh, just to to start the conversation. So it, it can be uh, more difficult, but uh, in, I think it's more a, a, an organization and logistic, uh, logistic problem. Mm -hmm. And I have um, also a question about the responsibilities uh, of these people. So these people uh, will have uh, responsibilities when, when they um, will be on the next stages, let's say, to development. Yeah? So uh, if they will be involved uh, also to other stages. Well, since uh, our um, our goal is to to um, to share uh, the passion for uh, game design, uh, we try to not uh, give uh, responsibilities to to people. If you wanna join, just to put down your ideas, and then uh, you don't like to to write, for example, or you don't have time to uh, to come and see the game developing with play test uh, and uh, writing session or so on you are free to just uh, join the the brainstorming it's uh, the event is is uh, is just uh, a weekend long so you can just uh, uh, join the weekend and then uh, uh, don't participate anymore if you don't want uh, so but uh, because uh, it's it's our goal we are not uh, you know a a stable uh, orchestra, but uh, we are a group of person uh, and uh, we have um, a, a little number of person that uh, join us uh, every time. And uh, we like to have different kind of person and uh, this is uh, our choice. Okay, thanks. So it's like, uh, you know, it's like an event when, when you, where you can join, but how many people will work on the game after that? And also, uh, have you got like, a, you know, a spreadsheet or something that you use in this case, or just the spark is enough? Yeah, we, we, 
create uh, a, a shared document, of course, to keep track of, uh, of progress. And, uh, you know, every time it's different. Uh, sometimes uh, I have, you know, maybe uh, five, six person working with me. And then I'm going to write the game uh, down uh, by myself uh, because uh, they have uh, something else to do or, or, or they simply uh, don't like to write a game. Because, you know, uh, if you think about, uh, for example, a, a character sheet, it can be a, a narrative text. It, it can be fun to write down. But, uh, but uh, when uh, you, you come down to, to instruction manual, it can be, you know, quite, uh, quite boring. And so not everyone likes to, to do it. And uh, it's okay for us because the point is uh, we, we want different idea. If you can uh, bring uh, an interesting idea, you, you have been uh, very valuable to the team. And uh, I can do the writing stuff if uh, no one else wants. Uh, I take this moment to also say that um, Mauro, Lucas, whoever, this is turning from a webinar, looks like more to a case study and free chat. So please feel free to just chip in with uh, thoughts already or questions for Oscar, because I think this is not like really a scripted uh, moment, as I understand. Like it's it's evolving into that. Right? Yeah. So, so feel, feel uh, free. It's fine for can me. I have a question, actually? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, when we are talking about role play games, uh, like for me, there are two types of them. There are educational ones that are that have this educational goal, and there are the second ones that are just for fun. Like you know, I don't know, five friends are meeting in uh, someone's house, and they are just playing like D and D and or something else. Uh, and uh, what I'm wondering uh, is about target group and about this whole mechanic things about stories, because like um, for me, it's sometimes harder to do this like universal for every age. Mm -hmm. Yes, because um, of course, some mechanics can be easier for people that are over 18 and for people that are, I don't know, 14, some Mm, mechanics can be harder, especially in these educational uh, role play games. Uh, so, how do you actually? I know this is this whole process when discussing things, but mm, how do you uh, actually come up with the idea, or how do you define the mechanics or take the mechanics depending on the age of mm, target group? Like, what is the process in that? Or do you have some book for that or something like that? Uh, yeah, so uh, I think that uh, now that uh, gamification is uh, is so trendy, uh, sometimes I see games that uh, lose sight of uh, what makes them games to focus too much on, uh, on info dumping, for example. And one problem with education game uh, to me that, that uh, sometimes they are not a uh, game at all. I, I don't know if you if you've seen uh, the uh, the Simpson uh, cartoon where uh, Bart was uh, uh, trying a video game, an educational video game, and then when uh, he, he realized that it's an educational video game, uh, he, it's not uh, fun anymore. Uh, so uh, I, I try to make. Uh, and as less different uh, as possible between uh, um, a LARP for uh, for my friends and the LARP for uh, for for school, for example, because uh, I I want uh, uh, the the role playing game to be uh, still a role playing game. Uh, I think it's uh, a matter of uh, of be be honest with with your audience because a um, role playing game can be very simple, very light on, on mechanics, but uh, it uh, can't work if uh, uh, people uh, just uh, uh, don't uh, upset to, to put them in play. Uh, to, to try something is going to be awkward sometimes, and uh, you, you have to, to, to act uh, in a very different way 
and uh, uh, they have to to understand what they're going to do. When uh, I I wrote a game for um, for school, and uh, I, I had the, the the chance to to make uh, some play test in in different schools, I realized the um, the most difficult part was uh, um, a communicate uh, which kind of experience is going to be uh, to the teachers uh, because. Uh, Mm, I, I I think I can I can write down uh, a good instruction, and I try to to keep them uh, simple enough, and uh, to for example uh, for uh, for the, this game uh, it was for for school so I try not to give them all the instruction uh, at the start of the game, but uh, I I divide the the game if in uh, different texts, and before every act. Uh, uh, you have the instruction for the act, and uh, it work uh, worked for uh, for the students. But uh, in the instruction manual, uh, I didn't write enough for the teacher, and so uh, the teacher didn't understand which kind of experience uh, uh, it was going to be, and it, it, it was very suspicious about the game uh, because uh, he, he can't figure uh, out um, anything about it. And uh, of course, uh, it, it was uh, uh, responsible because uh, it was the teacher. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I think it's very important to keep uh, the game a game. And uh, it's even more important to uh, share uh, why you you choose this experience uh, to be a game and not uh, something else uh, because role playing game is not so known in, in italy at least uh, you have to uh, to share its uh, its uh, more important point its a uh, selling point if you want for example i think uh, a role playing game is good for uh, for empathy and for sharing experience but uh, it's not very good for uh, for giving information. And so if I'm, I'm going to create a, um, a game about uh, an history fact, uh, it can be interesting to uh, give uh, to people the chance to feel the situation and then to have uh, a, a classic lesson about uh, all the fact uh, and, uh, and so on. Uh, so um, to me, an educational game is not so so different from uh, a regular game because they are both a game. Of course, uh, I can ask different things from a different uh, audience. Uh, so I I can add, for example, to role playing games to uh, to role playing gamers to um, follow a lot of difficult instruction because they are used to it. Um, but uh, maybe they are not going to to listen a lot of explanation about uh, uh, why we created this game, uh, what's the point, what's the educational matter. Maybe they don't want to have a, a debriefing at the end of the game, for example. Uh, if uh, I'm, cre I'm creating a game for the for students, uh, maybe since uh, it's like a lesson and they ha they have to to join the game. Uh, uh, they can be more uh, more patient and uh, more patient in uh, some things, uh, but uh, I can ask to, to them to to remember a lot of uh, instruction about the kind of game they are experienced for for the first time. I have a question also because I'm a little bit curious. I also have uh, my games, uh, role play games, which I developed already, and. Uh, from uh, my experience, uh, I firstly I made research. Uh, about needs, of course, about target group and so on. And uh, after this, uh, this um, creation process was by myself mm -hmm. or in some cases with one more people, let's say, one to maximum people. Uh, and I skip, um, let me say, I skip this brainstorm process. Okay. And for me, it's uh, really interesting how it's work, how you organize the process, how you prepare. Uh, this uh, you already shared it. I mean, uh, it's uh, my interesting point uh, in this webinar, and also uh, 
do you make uh, made some research before this brainstorm because uh, what i understood from from you you invite people uh, to to this brainstorm and they put something what they have from uh, their perspective their expertise uh, maybe some their needs let's say and so on but um, if you speak about the game uh, as it's also connect uh, question uh, connect which Lukas already asked uh, so uh, educational direction or game or how how it will be because People who will be on brainstorm, let's say, of this cre creation of idea of this uh, of this game, this is very important process because uh, it's a start point for, um, let's say, start point for this creation creation process. And uh, I'm interested in her. Uh, do you skip this research part or I, I mean resources not mean scientific research of course mm -hmm. yes so when we, we speak about some needs of target group or some something maybe some research maybe you know the uh, already development games uh, uh, as you as you think about and uh, so on yeah, uh, I I wrote uh, educational games uh, just um, by myself uh, or with my wife and uh, and so we we work um, as a very little uh, a very little team and uh, i wrote uh, um, games uh, within a group uh, for uh, um, for crescendo jokos anthology so they are a game for uh, for players um, but um, for example um, when i uh, wrote uh, a game for a school uh, the first play test was uh, in uh, in one of our uh, events uh, because uh, I mm, just wanted to to see if the game was uh, was fun enough and so I just want uh, the game uh, to be played uh, by a person that uh, came to to have fun so to to have uh, an interesting uh, experience because I think this is the the starting point I I didn't made uh, research before. And uh, I have to say, I have no uh, experience uh, in, uh, you know, uh, brainstorming or uh, or um, this kind of uh, uh, group work, uh, teamwork, or something like that. Um, I have a degree in literature, so I I, I know a lot about books, but uh, not so much about uh, you know uh, people working together. It's not my my kind of expertise, and. Uh, and uh, we we came to to organize event uh, about uh, people writing games uh, because uh, uh, we focus on uh, a very particular kind of games and you have uh, very few authors and uh, we want to to show that uh, it's not so so hard to write down a game uh, and you know you you have to work about it but it's like uh, you know um writing uh, it's very easy and uh, and very hard at the same times because uh, anyone uh, uh, can buy a computer and uh, put down uh, some phrases like uh, you write an email it's not uh, uh, different from a technical point of view but uh, you have to to understand uh, a lot of uh, soft rules about uh, writing and i think uh, it goes the same uh, with uh, with role playing games uh, it's uh, a, a new a, a relative new instrument for for expression and uh, we are uh, learning trying to to do things and uh, it was the same with uh, with our convention. We we try to find uh, a way that uh, sweet us to create game together. But uh, I didn't make uh, a research about I to have brainstorming before. I spoke with uh, with person who organized uh, um, similar events before. And uh, for example, one uh, crucial point for us is that uh, we have uh, an uh, an example, a shared example. We have this anthology and uh, everyone uh, knows we are going to write a game that can fit in the, this anthology. So we have some uh, uh, starting point. We don't have to, to say every time 
For example, we create game uh, without uh, facilitators, for example, everyone is going to play and, uh, where, and everyone knows it before starting uh, uh, to work on the game. And uh, in, uh, in other kind of, uh, of events, I know one of the problem was uh, that everyone um, had a different idea of game because everyone uh, knew they they were going to to write down a LARP, for example. But uh, uh, someone uh, like uh, you know uh, Murder Party, for example, uh, someone like uh, um, uh, bigger LARPs with. Uh, uh, an organization behind that uh, set down uh, every event uh, with uh, uh, non-player characters uh, going around and say pe uh, players what they have to do. And, uh, and so uh, you have uh, a definition of your project that was uh, uh, too wide. And uh, if you know uh, for who you're going to write the game, uh, which kind of game you're going to write, uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's uh, a way better starting point. I have also, I am, <clears throat> I'd like to say something. Um, actually with the care, one of the main difficulties that we had uh, was about the, um, the target. The target may not be very interested in a uh, Lord playing game or uh, even no, uh, maybe they don't know what our role play is. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me and, for example, Manuel, that we used to play LARP in a large association organization like uh, Gerebo Italia, for example, <laughs> for us, it's very easy to get in game. But for the for the, the target audience, it's not too easy. Do you think that there is a method or something to let the people get more in game? Um, it's the... Um, it's the setting and uh, enough, or maybe you can try to do, you know, an activity, a preliminary, a preliminary activity that can help or something like that. Maybe I also add something uh, to fa fa what, which I, uh, what Fabio asked about the maybe in instruction when you create the game, you need to put something to 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 get uh, much deeper to to game. What do you think? Uh, yeah, of course. Um... A workshop can be can be useful, but uh, I don't uh, I don't think there is a, a, a one size fits all uh, solution. And uh, for some games, uh, I, I like to have uh, a workshop, but for other games, uh, I don't like to have it. For some games, I think uh, I need to give to give a lot of instruction, and for other games, I think I I need very short instruction. It uh, it's, um, I think, uh, it depends on the kind of game. For example, if I'm going to, to write down um, a comedy game, for example, I think the instruction have to be as brief as possible. And uh, uh, because uh, this is the spirit of, uh, of this kind of game. And uh, uh, speaking to, to people that uh, never played before, uh, I like to say that uh, a role-playing game is your official uh, um, alibi to uh, to do something strange. Uh, I like to speak about you know uh, police and thieves. If uh, if we are playing police and thieves, I can follow you, I can run at you, and everything is okay. But uh, if I just wait for you outside your house without uh, saying anything, I just start uh, following you all the time. I think it's going to be quite creepy. And, uh, and so I think your play, uh, role playing, uh, it's uh, above all uh, an excuse to, to try something different. And uh, it's, uh, it's something uh, very simple we, we, we did when uh, we were children, for example. Uh, but uh, uh, most of the people, when you speak about uh, role playing, if they, if, uh, they know it, they think about, for example, uh, Dungeons and Dragon, that it's a, a very complex game with uh, a lot of rule, with uh, very big books, for example. And, uh, and so I think uh, we have uh, the same problem as a board game, that sometimes they are 
uh, too complex for for the audience uh, and the audience just want to you know have uh, someone on youtube then the, that explain the game for them uh, or, or they join games fair just to have the game explained and uh, uh, it's uh, a, a difficult uh, uh, equilibrium be between uh, uh, between uh, the need uh, to to be as inclusive as possible and uh, uh, the honesty to to say a game will be demanding because uh, role playing uh, I like uh, uh, very simple and rules light uh, RPGs but they are still going to be uh, very demanding uh, from uh, from players because uh, they have to uh, create a story together and it's not simple you have to talk a lot for example and not everyone is a, a teaser uh, talking a lot or uh, improve uh, some things uh, here and now uh, and so uh, I think we have to to try to to show how interesting the role playing games are, uh, but also saying to to people they have to do their part um, because uh, I see a lot of uh, role playing games where all the work is is on the is on the authors. They they are like uh, filmmakers and they try to. Uh, to have uh, all uh, a timeline very very strict, and uh, uh, they can just uh, make errors because maybe uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, of players. They they put a lot of effort and a lot of money in their work, and they uh, don't want to to make mistake. And uh, I understand it. But uh, I think uh, a game is a game if uh, it can go wrong. If uh, people can just try to, to take the game and do uh, what they want in the border uh, established by, by the designer, of course. But uh, uh, when they start playing, the game is, uh, is theirs. And uh, if you are too worried to have... Uh, an established uh, epilogue or uh, or a, a very uh, fancy scene you want to to recreate, it can be a problem. Uh, so yeah, you, actually, Lukas, sorry. Ah, okay, no, yeah, because I, I just to this, I uh, what was coming to my mind mm -hmm. is that you know in role play uh, in role plays. The participants, uh, the people that are playing, had a lot of freedom. They can do, for me, a lot of things. And you know, when we are talking about explanation to them, I really like role plays when there is no like you know the main goal of something. Like there is a little bit hidden. Yes. So the the facilitator or the educator is not saying, okay, you need to go there and take this. The participants need to kind of figure this out. Um, but. Do you have situations, or maybe do you uh, know how to? Uh, you know, for example, you because you can prepare perfect game, yes, and you know the hidden story behind that was I don't know collect some ring from some case, and you know the ring was needed for something to finish the game, but participants decide okay we will not take this we will destroy this. And, you know, this is breaking totally your mechanic. This is breaking totally your storyline. This is like, you know, for example, second part of <laughs> the role play is kind of have no sense right now because they decided, because of this freedom, they decided to destroy this. Uh, destroy it for this ring, for example. And right now, do you think that is better you as a game master, educator, you know, jump in and say, you can't do this because uh, there is, and um, you just can't do this, or you know, think fast and trying to, do, when they are doing this, remodelate uh, this part because you know this, like I said, this can totally go because of this freedom in the way that you didn't thought, and participants, I know that they can think, especially when they are in the group, they can think a lot of out of the box. Yeah, it's um, 
it's a, a common problem, uh, of course. And uh, I think the, the most important thing is uh, to uh, communicate clearly uh, the point of the game. Um, I can make uh, an example. Uh, we we published uh, as a, as a publishing house, so it was like uh, an adaptation from an American game, uh, a fantasy game that uh, is uh, about a, a party of uh, very uh, fancy and, and strange uh, characters uh, making the travel, like in uh, every fantasy novel. Uh, but uh, uh, this game, uh, it's uh, uh, for the author, is a, is a metaphor for uh, terminal illness. Uh, you know, if uh, a, a book, uh, a, a novel, uh, start and say to me, it's a novel about uh, terminal illness, I'm going to be disappointed because uh, I, I, I want to figure it out uh, because the, the author has uh, all the control on the story and uh, he can just uh, show me the meaning of his story. If I can't understand the meaning of his story, maybe I, maybe I don't read it uh, so well, or maybe he didn't write it so well. But uh, when we came to uh, role playing games, uh, we decided to, to start with an introduction for, um, from the author saying uh, uh, this game uh, is about uh, this theme uh, because uh, um, it's a game without uh, a game master and uh, the author isn't going to be there. And I, as a publisher, I'm not going to be there. In, in just in a demonstration uh, fair, but when you're playing at home, no one is going to be there and to say to you, all right, this is all wrong. We are, you are uh, uh, playing uh, a, a standard fantasy game uh, about uh, a party fighting and, uh, and something like that, but the game is about something else. So uh, uh, people, players uh, have to know what the game is about. And uh, when I create a, a mechanic about the theme of the game, and they know the theme of the game, I think they are not going to break it. Uh, because uh, if, uh, if they know, uh, for example, for in your example, the purpose is, uh, of the game is uh, a treasure hunt, I know if uh, that I ignore one of the, of the clues, I'm not going to, to find the treasure. And so the, all the experience is, is meaningless. If I know that a role playing is about uh, um, understand how a, a refugee can feel, I know, I know I, I'm not going to uh, to spoil the game to everyone, uh, cracking jokes uh, or do something like that. You know, a person can always do it. You always have uh, a, a party pooper. Sometimes uh, you can find uh, this this kind of person is uh, is out your control. Uh, but uh, I think what you can do is uh, to uh, to be clear to to people and not to rely too much on uh, on secrets, because uh, yes, uh, no no one likes spoiler, but uh, it's uh, more important to have a shared experience where uh, uh, all the the participants are are on point. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Uh... Just you know, I'm like from the one experience that we had because you know, previously a few weeks ago we had whole youth exchange about uh, games, mm -hmm. and in one role play game we had the situation that one player got really into the game, you know, because people can get really into the game, and uh, for, for example, yes, uh, even like. Because what I have in my mind, even you know, when I'm uh, a player of some role plays, because I'm also playing with my friends, uh, I know that you know sometimes people can even with the instruction, even with these clues, even with these uh, things, yes, uh, can go too deep and go too emotional, because it's a role play, and they can really to. Uh, you know, get to this. So uh, when I'm creating the game, yes, I'm trying to avoid these things. 
but do you think or do you have some clues how during the creation of the game process of creation of the game uh, you can provide this situation that you know one person will break this thing will bring break this story like i said you know he went too deep into this he and he decided okay now i want to i don't know kill everybody or destroy everything drop a bomb anything yes and of course if you if you write the story it's okay but even in the fantasy world when you are writing the story when you are creating it's a fantasy world in the classic role play games you can as a game master just say roll the dice okay you have uh, under uh, 10 you yeah. are uh, you didn't do this but more uh, about this educational and you know process with participants in schools etc cetera, etc cetera, you can't just tell them roll the dice because <laughs> the, we didn't decide to play with dice mm -hmm. so do you have any ideas or do you in the creation process when you are deciding uh, do you have this you know, gate for you as a creator or for facilitator that can prevent this. This one person that decide, okay, I will break the game uh, and I will right now, like I said, drop the bomb, destroy this because I don't know, I had an argument with the uh, player next to me and I don't want to do this and I don't want all of us, all of us to win. Yeah, it's... Um... It's very difficult because uh, uh, I think it's all about uh, game culture. And of course, I can create a, a game culture in my in my community because we have a lot of events. And uh, uh, one year after the other, I can uh, uh, I can made, uh, make it very clear what our events are about. If you are creating something for people that are going to, to role play just one time, and maybe no more. It's uh, it's very difficult, and because uh, uh, you can give a very very clear explanation, but uh, uh, the spirit of uh, of a game is something uh, uh, more difficult to to catch. And uh, I can I can um, I I have seen a lot of example. Um, 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 sometimes uh, um, creators put a lot of emphasis on uh, on one stuff because uh, it's uh, it's a trend at the moment, and, and so you can say to to people, uh, for example, you know, uh, safety is uh, is very important, uh, but uh, if when you make an example of uh, of safety, uh, you you make it with. Uh, with the wrong spirit so i i say to you you can say stop whenever you want so it's safe but uh, while i'm explaining it to you i'm i'm going to stress down that yes you can say stop whenever you want but uh, if you do it uh, too often you are going to spoil the game you won't feel free to say it even even if there is a rule so rules are, are important, of course, but uh, uh, create uh, a, a positive culture is uh, is something complex. It's like uh, in every in every kind of uh, of human meeting, uh, it's not enough to to just say uh, be good, uh, be, be be polite to everyone else. Uh, you have to, you, you need time. Uh, and, and so um, when you when you meet person just one time, it's uh, it's difficult. Uh, I I have tried to uh, to have the same games in in different uh, in different classes, for example. and uh, uh, you can have the the the, the class uh, the, the group of uh, of guys, uh, that uh, is going to to play the game like uh, it was your mind, and sometimes you 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 are going to to struggle 
to to keep uh, to keep something good in a very difficult uh, situation but uh, as i was uh, i was saying uh, a game is a game if uh, it can fail so i think you can write a very good game and have a, a, a very a very bad experience sometimes because the um, because the the audience was not uh, the right audience and uh, and it's it's okay because uh, like uh, no movie can be liked by everyone uh, the game can be the wrong game i know it's very difficult where you are uh, an organization and you have uh, just a one shot uh, to to share a very important message with uh, a single game and uh, to say okay it's gone wrong uh, no problem I, I know it's uh, it's hard but i think that uh, that fail is uh, is part of the game and uh, even if we we say uh, in a role playing game there are no no winners there is no purpose of the game uh, the purpose is always to to share a meaningful uh, story but not every time all the all the people are are focused uh, they are not on the same page and uh, so you can... mean it's unavoidable like it happens yeah, yeah. So there is not uh, well I, i'm i'm sure there are some ways you can minimize the risk as you say maybe introducing the, the setting and the context and theme which puts a little bit everyone on the same uh on the same wavelength but yeah i i guess that is unavoidable it, it also is up i guess to the facilitator so in the moment you have a trained and well prepared facilitator that uh helps i hope Right. Yeah, yeah. It is I also know. a problem if you write games for other people, especially if you write games for teachers or stuff like we do in school. In school, that's a problem that you were saying. And also, Luca said maybe you were thinking about that. Like you do the thing for school, there is that one kid or two kids which are just making a havoc out of everything, and you're like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, how do you yeah, fix also that? Yeah. Yeah, also I had like uh, I had an idea actually about this how you can minimize minimize this because also for for me uh, when I'm creating or I'm thinking about a uh, role play game uh, I'm always thinking a lot and putting uh, effort to thinking about in this type of course uh, character sheets yes character cards etc cetera, etc cetera. and like of course you can't put too much things into the character uh, cards and even sometimes you are not putting character um, character cards um, but for like typical ones yes but for me it also can minimize um, this thing if you will put yes what is your morality what is this what is this what is this uh, so kind of like put this responsibility to uh participants that are in this game that they because of the character sheet that you prepared or they are preparing based on what you created I can minimize this yes uh, because you put them in this position that okay my character is very good a very good morality mm -hmm. and also you have while creating this and they when they are creating this or when you are preparing these characters you still have control about this so you can suggest suggest to some player maybe it's not a good idea to put this as your morality yes maybe this is not suitable maybe this is not this so uh, my question uh, coming based on that is uh how often when you are creating games yes you are preparing character cards and mm -hmm. um, follow up to this is uh what do you think what is must have on um, character cards like what have to be must have uh on these cards yeah uh we are we are going to speak about uh, um how to write a game or my suggestion about writing a game in the in our next uh, in our next meet uh, but um, uh, you know 
uh, um, character sheets are, are very important, but uh, uh, they are not uh, an insurance, of course, because uh, you have uh, uh, you have no control about uh, what uh, people uh, is going to do. Uh, I've seen a lot of time uh, the same character uh, um, in uh, in the end of uh, of different person being uh, portrayed in a very different way. Uh, there are uh, people that are going to be themselves all the time. You can write for them a very angry character, but uh, if you're if you if they are shy, they can just uh, win uh, themselves, and they just uh, can't portray the the character you wanted. And uh, if you don't have uh, in, you don't have a casting for uh, for person uh, the right person in the in the right uh, in the right role. Uh, it's a it's a difficult solution uh, about character sheet. Uh, I don't like too much to to write a profile. I don't like to say to you your your character is a, a, an angry character, but I I prefer to to write down uh, uh, you know letters on or or diary and to uh, give you the the, the idea of an angry person. So I'm not going to, to put down, you're going to be very angry, but I'm going to put uh, a lot of story in your background where where your your character react with, with anger, because I think uh, that uh, uh, people can like uh, uh, stories uh, way more than, uh, than definition, uh, even if they are more complex, of course. But uh, if uh, there is a good story in your background, Maybe you are you're going to share it to, to other players. You are going to remember it. And it can be a powerful uh, tool. And if I just give you a, a definition, if, uh, if it's not in your, uh, uh, in your wavelength, uh, you are not going to give me that kind of role uh, in, in any way. Because if you can't, uh, you can't uh, just force yourself uh, to be anyone else. Uh, you are not an actor, and uh, the role playing uh, is not a performance. Uh, you have not to, to do something because you have to to show to show yourself. And uh, and so uh, I think the mm, the most reliable solution is to to share. Uh, Mm, the same spirit for the game. If it's going to be a very, you know, a game about community, you can uh, you can create uh, any kind of uh, of character, but you have to uh, to play in order to uh, to stress or to strengthen the community because uh, this is the this is the concept. This is what the game is about. And if you just try to to break down the the community, you're going to break down the game. And uh, if people know that uh, what uh, uh, what's the purpose of the game, because this is the purpose of a role playing game, uh, is uh, telling a story about this very specific uh, kind of team. Uh, if uh, if they are if they want to play and they are honest, uh, they are going to play this way because. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it's like you know playing uh, at uh, at a risico, and you don't want uh, to make war at all because you are a pacifist. Uh, it's okay, but uh, there is no no meaning playing uh, risico together. And it's the same with the uh, role playing game. It, uh, it's a game about uh, uh, collaboration. You are, you need to to collaborate. If uh, it's a, a treasure hunt. Even if you don't uh, like Treasurant, if maybe you didn't expect to come and play a Treasurant, you are going to 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 try to find some clues because uh, otherwise you are not going to to play at all. You know, it's like when I I work as a, as a guide in a museum of uh, contemporary art. Uh, some people uh, come to the museum because uh, they want to see this kind of art, and uh, other person just. Uh, uh, come to the museum because uh, someone else uh, bring them uh, to the museum, and uh, I try to to empathize with them and to find uh, something to say to them. Uh, come on, give this experience uh, a chance, or you are going to to spend two very boring hours. And I think it's the same with the uh, we're playing games. You you try to to be very clear about uh, what the game is about and uh, to ask people, uh, give it a try.
So you're like setting up, uh, like during maybe the workshop, you set up the expectations and the tone and everything to immerse them. Um, I, I have a question for you uh, regarding the process of the mm-hmm. developing, because you said, all right, so people do the research, like the five minutes thing that they, they do the brainstorm. But, and then there is this moment after the brainstorm where you have all the ideas and all the stuff put together. How you go from those mess of ideas to the game? Like, do you have a framework to work on that? Do you have a set of steps that you follow to go from the raw idea, messy sometimes, to the final thing? Even not just final, but drafted with all the mechanics in place clearly defined. Do you have like a step-by-step thing? Do you have like a framework? Do Do you have something that you use methodically? To get from step A to step B, yeah, we have we have uh, mm, different phases. Uh, like I said, the, the the first phase is about uh, never say no, and then uh, in um, the in the second phase we we have to be more more picky and uh, to choose uh, something, and uh, sometimes you have different idea that just uh, mm, click very well together. This is the brainstorm, right? Yeah, yeah. And after the brainstorm, uh, you can have uh, uh, ideas that fit well together or very different idea. In the first time, we try to put them together. But uh, at, uh, um, at the moment, uh, someone has to, 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 give, the, to give pass to, to, to someone else. And, and so it's, uh, you have to, to work uh, with uh, with conflicts too because uh, uh, people uh, like their ideas and uh, yeah, it's course. easy yeah. to, to to just uh, to just leave them and uh, and so uh, i think uh, um, anyone uh, will have the chance to to speak for uh, for his own idea and uh, yeah, to say yeah. my idea is good uh, because of this and that and then want to leave it down because uh, uh it's uh it's good for this reason and uh and we try to to find a way sometimes we just say okay this is a good idea but uh, uh the majority of people uh prefer to work on something different and you are going to make a, a game about your idea next time yeah, yeah. Like, I, uh, I, under, I understand this just just imagine there is no other people like it's just you you have this bunch of ideas maybe you didn't have someone else if you're developing alone as Katya was saying before like I'm developing myself the thing Mm -hmm. how do you go from your concept and your mess of ideas to the final thing like do you have a set of procedures that you put in place to go from that to that I hope I'm making like my question clear Yeah, I, I don't think I have a, a set of, uh, of very strict uh, procedures, but uh, since I can have uh, a different kind of, of big idea, uh, I need uh, uh, some other pieces. Maybe I have an idea for a very cool uh, uh, game mechanic. For example, I want a game where uh, uh, two players are going to play the same characters and they are going to to pass each other the, the control of the character. And they like this idea, and they want to create a game about this idea, but I don't know what kind of setting can be good for this specific idea, and they had to find it out. Or maybe I have a, a setting I like very much, and I want to explore, but I don't know how, for example, I have, a, you know, a, I want to create a, a game in a fantasy labyrinth, but I don't know how to play this kind of game just in one room, for example. And they have to find uh, ideas. I, I think uh, and that uh, when you choose uh, your, your first uh, uh, big idea, you put down boundaries and then you have uh, problems and uh, you try to solve these problems. And uh, if everything uh, goes smooth, you can just uh, found your game at the end of the process answering all the, the critical uh, questions about your game. So how can I do it? Uh, what, which kind of solution I need? And then you can try to put uh, the pieces uh, together. Sometimes, of course, it uh, it uh, don't work and you have to to restart or, or to find different solution. Or, or sometimes you you think you have all the, all the answers 
and then you you just uh, sleep one night and in the very next day you think uh, all your solution are just uh, crap and uh, and you have to to restart thinking about it but mm -hmm. uh, i think it's part of the of the process and uh, you you have to um, to give your ideas a chance and then to try to stress them and uh, try to to think if they can work always trying to to imagine uh, what people uh, are going to do with uh, with your ideas i'm asking something uh, reasonable or i'm asking uh, too much and uh, of course you you try to rely in your uh, past experience to to try to find out uh, what can work and what uh, cannot work all right so you don't have like a, a more or less a method like a fixed method so you just go on and see how it goes uh, like yeah when, during I, when the I, process yeah when i'm alone i can just you know uh, try to find different uh, ideas since uh, i i create game about uh, you know uh, one single mechanic one single theme the most of the time uh, um, it's uh, like make it or, or break it uh if uh, any everything uh, works or everything uh, simply doesn't work and i and i try to work to to something else because uh, um they are not game with you know for example a very uh, difficult uh, mathematics for example so yeah uh, play tests are important of course but just to to put down some uh, details to to make uh, adjustment but uh, um when uh, I, I come to the point, I can imagine the game, uh, I can imagine uh, uh, what people is going to do. Uh, and I think I'm uh, at a good point. Point. Usually the game, uh, at uh, when it comes to, to that point, uh, it's not going to, to disappoint me uh, because uh, of course I can always do, do better, but uh, if I have uh, a stronger structure, uh, the work is almost done. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm. Yeah, no, no, I have because I have totally like right now different questions. So, Manuel, if you have something to ask, no, I can no. wait. Okay, because I want to ask for, for me important question, and I think for people that are also creating uh, role play games, it's important because you no, know, I'm not a lawyer and I don't know these things, and I think that you created a lot of games. So, when I'm creating my game and I'm creating storyline from the beginning. The story, the history, the lore, the universe is mine, it's mine. Yes? But sometimes people are using like Star Wars or Marvel or any other, you know, big things that people can rely on and they know this. And you know, when you are like with your friends and this is not for educational purpose, or you're just having fun if, in your closed group of friends. No, nobody will, you know, sue you for copywriting laws. Yes, mm -hmm. but if I'm creating a game and I don't know, I want to put this in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, yes, that the story isn't there a problem that I'm using this story that I don't have lo lost to that you know. Because D and D, it's a game for everybody. It's a game, but these things are more <laughs> is some somebody's intellectual output that is his. And you know, you know, I don't feel that I can totally free as I want use this for my game. Mm -hmm. Like I said, for example, Star Wars, because I want to, and because this will be suitable for me. So, do you maybe you know how it works actually? <laughs> so I actually I never worked on uh, other intellectual uh, property it's uh, like a rule in our brainstorming section mm -hmm. uh, you can't uh, uh, we have to choose a setting but it can be a setting uh, with uh, a, an intellectual property uh, with copyright because um, one way because we, we don't want problem of course but uh, it's also because uh, uh, since I need to, to set expectation, I want to have uh, control, complete control on the information uh, I give to, to people about the setting, what's important, 
okay, well, it's not important. For example, if I create a, a game about uh, Lord of the Rings, I know it's better than uh, Star Wars, so I'm going to, to set example in, uh, in Tolkien's uh, work. Uh, maybe you are going to join because uh, you like, uh, you know, uh, the Shire and, uh, and Hobbits and uh, this kind of uh, imagination. Uh, that's uh, it, it's like uh, a 19th century English countryside, or maybe you join the game because you want to um, to play elves, for example, something more more magical, something more more proud, more epic. And uh, um, for me, it's a problem to work with very different expectation. And uh, I think a, a problem about uh, um, a very big events big LARPs, is that, uh, of course, uh, um, the the organization behind the game wants uh, a lot of, uh, of players to come. And so uh, they make a lot of, uh, of promise, promises about what the game is about. And they say, if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to fight, you're going to fight. If you go, if you, if you want to, uh, to just uh, acting like your, your character, it's uh, you, you are going to just uh, talk uh, and stuff like that. And uh, in, my, in my experience where you try to satisfy very different kind of audience, uh, you're going to fail uh, quite badly because uh, a game cannot be about everything. And uh, if you work with a very complex intellectual pr property, you have to work with uh, with a lot of expectations, so it's uh, it's very good for uh, from uh, a promotional uh, point of view, but I think it can be very complex uh, when you come down to to game design. Uh, and I have no no answer like a, a lawyer just because I never work on uh, on intellectual property, but uh, mm, I can speak about uh, the, the difficulty I can see in this kind of uh, of approach. Like I, I hope it can be still useful. Okay, yeah, thank you. Because you know, I was wondering actually, yes, about this because yeah. I saw some role role plays in some universes that are you know on Disney or in someone, yeah. and I was wondering, like you know, because for me it's pretty strange because you know putting yes myself in the position that I created some story, and right now somebody is taking this and creating something else based on this it's not good yeah, yeah but, 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 you know i think they uh, they hope to be uh, not so important to to risk anything and uh, uh, so another problem i can see is that if uh, i create a story about a lot of the ring and i'm saying to you okay you are going to be to be frodo and then I'm going to say, Manuel, okay, Manuel, you're going to be this orbit uh, I just created. Uh, they are very different. You are you are going to be the main character, and Manuel is going to be just uh, a side character. And I don't want to have uh, this kind of problem in my story because in uh, a role playing game, to me, everyone uh, needs to have the the same chances. Uh, every character has to um, has to be important because uh, uh, a player is a player and then they want to, to have them different. And if I have an NPC uh, portrayed by me, it can be different, but uh, I think uh, that uh, have, uh, uh, give a chance to all the character is, uh, is an important thing. Righty. What do you, do you think we are okay? Do we want to add something or? Uh, I have one last question from me. Of course. Now, uh, do you using a lot of digital tools while creating the game and later implementation the game and you know i'm not talking right now about ai start gpt because of course you know right now graphic can be done pretty easily and pretty fast yes but more like um, do you have any useful tools for creation role for creating role plays digital tools that can help someone 
in, in the creation process? Uh, I'm a very uh, analogic person, and uh, so I, I don't have any suggestion about uh, digital tools. We just use, you know, Google Documents or something like that to keep track of the of the progress of the game and to to share to have a shared place for uh, for the game uh, development. Um, I know um, there are a lot of tools, you know, when, um, for example, when you have uh, a lot of, uh, of characters and you have to, to keep track of all the, the relationships between them. So uh, I know there are digital tools, but uh, I didn't use them I, and I, I don't know the name, so I, I cannot be uh, of any help in, the, in this uh, particular uh, team. <laughs> So question was nice though. Yeah, if uh, anyone has any question, I'm here or I'm uh, I'm done for this uh, for this meeting. I think. I guess we are fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, I think cool. you're. Right. All right then. Uh, thanks everybody. So we will readjourn to the next one. Thanks for being here, Oscar. Thanks, Katia. Thanks, Fabio. Thanks, Lukas. It was very nice. And Mauro already left. Well, he had something to do. So, all right, people. Uh, have a nice evening. See you next time. Thank you all. And have a Thank nice you. evening, guys. See you. Thank you. See, yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.